There always seems to be a little bit of a narrative of destruction around decentralized weapons. And I really see it as something quite positive, as a beautiful opportunity for people to feel empowered. The founder of a pro-gun group has been posting instructions online for using 3D the printers to The federal government settled guns. a lawsuit with Wilson's organization Defense Distributed. More than 2,500 people have downloaded Cody Wilson's blueprints for 3D printed AR-15 assault style rifles. Coming to a school near you, these ghost guns are the new wave of American gun Violence. We're here to expressly outlaw so-called ghost guns. The man at the center of the debate over 3D printed guns has been charged with sexually assaulting a child. My name is Paloma Heindorf. I'm the new director of Defense Distributed. Defense Distributed, the Austin, Texas-based company best known for introducing to the world a 3D printed gun called the Liberator, has had a wild seven months. It reached a settlement in a long-standing federal lawsuit, reposted all of its downloadable gun files on the internet, was sued by 25 states, and then had to pull all those files back down. Yet the most consequential event for the company was the arrest and indictment of its founder, Cody Wilson, on a sex crime charge. Stepping up as the new director was Paloma Heindorf, who had almost no experience on the public stage and hadn't even fired a gun prior to 2015. How have the past several months as director been for you? Uh, so I guess, yeah, it's been about four months, I guess. Um, it's been cool. I mean, I'm not going to... I'm not going to say it was the best promotion I ever got, um, but it was, uh, I think, f from a business standpoint, we've done incredibly well. M minimal disruption to our daily operations. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's really excited about the coming year. Heindorf took over in late September 2018 after Austin police announced a warrant for the arrest of founder Cody Wilson for allegedly paying for sex with a 16-year-old female he met through an app called Sugar Daddy Meat in a state where the age of consent is 17. Police discovered Wilson was in Taiwan where local authorities detained him and sent him back and he's currently out on bail awaiting trial. But where does that leave Defense Distributed, a company oriented around Wilson's brash public persona and vision of an all-out war between the state and the individual? There's no middle ground here. We're facing an overwhelming tide of technological superstatism, uh, surveillance and control, harnessing of the financial networks, the information flows. Wake up. Wake up, my God. Support public key encryption, support Bitcoin, do everything you can to get the hell out of here and support the balkanization of this overwhelming power. We're very different. I think it's been made obvious the last couple of months. Cody is way more comfortable in front of a camera than I am. Yeah. I think there'll be a noticeable difference in the way that the company is operating, for sure. How so? Less, less interviews. <laughs> um, less interviews and hopefully I'll get out like more regular content to keep people informed. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, our, our previous style was more erratic. Mm. Um, I'm less likely to do one-on-one -on -one interviews quite as much, but I do hope to push out like blog posts and stuff like that to be able to keep people informed. Mm. So you will see a difference, but I really hope that people believe that the aim of the company and the goal of our mission is not altered at all. That's exactly the same. Cody was committed to this idea of crypto anarchy. Mm. Is that something that motivates you as well? This push towards a increasingly decentralized fractured system and your technology is enabling that somehow? Yeah. Now, whether I like, you know, the crypto anarchist label. Yeah. Like whether whether I want to sort of solidify myself in, in that camp. No, because I'm I like to wriggle around. But yeah, I, it, it's the same motivation. It just comes out differently because I really do see it as a, hmm. as a beautiful opportunity for people to feel empowered and be able to exercise their own abilities and, and grow as an individual. Like we're so honed in with all of our responsibilities and, you know, you m must make sure you work for a corporation so you can get good health insurance and just everywhere we turn, we're just trapped, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a big motivation of mine is the, to, to move towards a society that looks like that. One of the only online artifacts from Heindorf's pre-defense distributed days is from a live poetry reading in London from 2013. It's a dream that tests the perception of reality by candidly depicting a restricting atmosphere. So with my eyes wide shut, everything becomes clear. You're British. 
you worked in New York and you somehow ended up here. So how did that happen? You just want the connect the dots bits. Um, sure, okay. Uh, yeah, I grew up in central London. Uh, I'm a little alley cat, really. And then I moved to New York. I guess the first 10 years of my professional life, I ran a lot of events. I managed a lot of bars and then I became an office manager for a media company. I went for a summer Friday lunch when you get off work early had a few drinks and got a cab back to Brooklyn with a friend of mine. I was going off about how irritated I was with people trying to just increase legislation and think that that's a way to protect themselves. And uh, in my view, just relinquishing a sense of personal responsibility, mm. uh, diverting blame. And I was ranting about this in the back of a cab going over the Brooklyn Bridge. And my friend James just said, oh, hey, you should really check out Cody Wilson and Defense Distributed. And I did. Um, about three days later, my flatmate told me that I should probably leave the house because I'd just been like in this wormhole of discovering the work of Defence Distributed. Yeah. And I just popped Cody an email, told him I wanted a job and he was like, you should come and check us out first. And I did. I met him and then I just told Cody I was going to move to Austin and he was going to give me a job. And uh, then I showed up and he was a bit confused for a while. And then I made him quite a lot of money and he was like, OK, you can, <laughs> you can come and work here. What was it about the organization and its mission that uh, grabbed you like that? I had a inherited opinion about guns and gun mm. control. What was that inherited opinion? Guns equal bad, okay. yeah. <laughs> I think, is the general one. Like, I've learned so much in the last few years. It was really funny. I actually saw some people pull it up because, as you said, there's not a whole heap about me on the Internet. And I think... Um, I read one thing where someone was like, she didn't even shoot a gun until 2015. And then they also got upset that I didn't own a gun. And I was like, it would have been incredibly irresponsible of me to have not shot a gun and bought one. Like, I, don't, I think that that's a very strange thing to have expected me to have done. The releasing of a 3D printed gun online, like the, the code for something like that, it just presents a whole new world immediately, yeah. doesn't it? It's okay, well, technology is gonna develop in this way. We have, this extraordinary opportunity to use technology individually to experiment and grow. There's this narrative that's like, oh, if we have guns, that automatically means violence. But the development of this technology, separate to the way that society is behaving, and the relationship between the two, that's the interesting conversation. Should government legislate technology in such a strict way? You may believe that that's right, but let's have a chat about that. In my opinion, that's a pretty dangerous track to go down. How is Cody's departure affected the company? Um, first of all, just, you know, just I, I know that you already know this to make it clear. I won't be making any comments on Cody's personal situation. Mm -hmm. You know, it certainly wasn't a happy occasion for anyone. But I think Cody's departure has affected us less than people m might actually think. And I would understand why people would think that it would be chaos because, you know, he's an incredibly powerful figurehead. But there are quite a bit of us working back mm -hmm. there. So it's been more of maybe a personal effect than, oh, now we can't run the company. The mm -hmm. company is doing just fine. Of course, at Defense Distributed, business as usual is anything but. Just ask the company's attorney, Josh Blackman, a constitutional law associate professor at the South Texas College of Law, whom Wilson reached out to and hired in 2014 after reading one of Blackman's articles on the First and Second Amendments in the digital age. If the future of Defense Distributed's business rests on Heindorf's shoulders, the company's legal future rests largely on Blackman's. We've been working closely with Ploma. She is a wonderful leader. And to be frank, our litigation has not skipped a beat. It's more or less continued as it was before. Blackman, in partnership with the Second Amendment Foundation, fought the Department of Justice over the right of defense distributed to post downloadable gun files on the company's digital library, DEFCAD. After years of losses in federal courts and a denial to be heard in the Supreme Court, Defense Distributed shocked the world in 2018 by reaching a settlement with the federal government that allowed the company to repost the files. That means anyone, absolutely anyone with access to a high quality 3D printer, and that just means you need the money for it, could potentially create their own ghost gun. Why do you think the federal government settled with you? I wanna be careful with what I say here. Why, why would you settle with someone? In court. I would think I couldn't win. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but that victory was short-lived. More than 20 states are making a last-ditch effort to stop a man from posting the blueprints for 3D printed guns online. The barrage of lawsuits from state attorneys general rained down on Defense Distributed mere weeks after announcing victory. 
Blackman fended off attacks as best he could, but eventually had to deliver some bad news to Wilson and his team. Tonight, a federal judge in Seattle ordered him to not upload any more blueprints. We lost. Now I had to make the tough call to Cody and say, Cody, take it down. But even that short-lived victory had been enough for Wilson to take his opportunity. With a bit of misdirection, he had made the downloadable file library live and freely available five days before he told the media he was going to do so. They hit 20,000 downloads in the first 24 hours, and the files have since proliferated on torrent sites across the internet. And Blackman isn't giving up the fight to get DefCAD back online. In early January, he appeared in front of the same federal judge in Texas who ruled against him in the Department of Justice case to file a restraining order against the state of New Jersey after the governor signed a bill banning downloadable gun files. Outlaw so-called ghost guns here in New Jersey. What Blackman says he hopes the public understands about his case is that it's not really about guns, but about speech. This statute makes it a crime to distribute a file on the internet. Defense Security does not sell guns. They're not handing guns to anyone. They're putting information online which someone could use to create a gun. And that gap between the information and the actual gun is enough for constitutional protection. Not only does New Jersey's law prohibit defense distributed from posting downloadable gun files, Blackman says the law's ban on advertising prohibits even talking about the existence of such files. I'm trying to protect speech, and when I talk about that, I can't even talk about those rights being infringed um, without that then being censored. And the company isn't just fighting governments. They say they've been subject to what they call corporate censorship. In the past six months, year, we've experienced things that even we were shocked by. Facebook won't allow anyone to share any links to our products. YouTube, if any videos even referencing DefCAD codes, they get removed. These corporations are saying that knowledge of this knowledge is too dangerous for people to have. Mm -hmm. The plans for this gun were downloaded like a million times five years ago. But apparently the knowledge that this even exists is too dangerous to talk about. That's crazy to me. They're talking about these files, they're talking about code, they're completely removing any human interaction from the, the acquisition of the code to the development of the firearm. Like it's really the information that they're trying to stifle. Otherwise they would have written a different law. How disrespectful to one's subjects, I'll call them, to not trust them with information, to say, oh, you're not, you, you, the general populace cannot be trusted with this information. But for government officials like New Jersey's governor and attorney general, both of whom declined our interview requests, this case most certainly is about guns. The NRA, to the surprise of absolutely no one, has mocked the effort to outlaw ghost guns. The NRA has been MIA in our case. They've taken the position that they really either don't care or they don't support it. NRA, where are you at? And despite the First Amendment implications of the case, major civil liberties organizations have also declined to help defense distribute it. We have a state here that's about to pass a criminal statute to make it a crime to post a file on the internet and it occasioned no outrage. The ACLU said nothing, right? Civil libertarians said nothing. It took us, the, the gun group, right, to bring this lawsuit and we've gotten zero support in the public. People have such aversion to guns, they're willing to sacrifice free speech. I think that's a mistake. As for Paloma Heindorf, she remains focused on the company's latest product launch and the continuation of Defense Distributed's larger mission post Cody Wilson. The future of the legal battles that you're engaged it's in. Do you funny. think you're going to win legally? Uh, what a question. I don't, I don't think I can answer that question. Um, do I think we should win? Yes. Uh, do I think we will win? I'm going to be realistic about that one. Um, the best that we can do is just not give up.